Good afternoon and welcome to the Caribbean Edge Kids. My name is Auntie Dawn. I am so blessed to have you on this beautiful Sunday. It is hot here in South Florida, but we're not complaining. We're enjoying the weather here. I woke up this morning to some beautiful um, fried fish, breadfruit, bami, some real Jamaican food, which is what we're celebrating, just our rich health heritage and culture and sharing that with the rest of the world. So we're so glad you're tuning in. Remember to share this episode and I want to introduce my lovely panel of you. I'm going to start with the kids. So we have little five-year-old Jaden joining us. Hi, Jaden. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. So Jaden, this is his second time on the Caribbean Edge Kids, and he has a story for you. And we have Miss Akela, who is joining us. She is a proud student of Bethlehem Junior Academy. And we're always so happy to have children from that school who also sponsors the Caribbean Edge Kids. Hi, Akela. Hi, Ms. Hi, Auntie Dawn. Hi, good morning, beautiful, and I know you have a special treat for us today, so stay tuned and check her out. Auntie Nadine, welcome, welcome, first timer on the show. Yes, and also first timer on our live. <laughs> yes, I'm excited, I'm so happy to be here, thank you for having me, Auntie Sophie and Auntie Dawn, I'm so honored to be with you. Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks. I'm so happy, boys and girls. Jaden and Akela. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Auntie Nadine. And as you mentioned, we have the honor of having Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks with us, yes. who I think she just loves us. <laughs> I do. I do. I love you so much. Uh, and it's my honor. Honor goes in several directions back and forth, to and from, round and round. And it is always so great. I don't know where you get these beautiful, bright children from. A five-year-old boy is going to tell a story. Jaden, that's incredible. It's my pleasure to meet you, Auntie Nadine, Auntie Sophie, Akela. What a treat on the last day of February. Thank you, Auntie Dawn. Thank you. I'm already smiling. My jaw's hurting me already. <laughs> Auntie Sophie, happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday to you all and happy last day of Black History Month. We are so happy that we can celebrate our culture, our heritage, as Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks says, our intangible heritage. We're sharing it with the world. We're sharing our love. We're sharing our joy, our passion. As Auntie Dawn always says, we're here to inspire, to motivate, and sometimes, of course, educate. So you're always in for a treat and you're always going to learn something new. So it is our joy and our pleasure to share. And thank you for coming in our space. Big up, Caribbean Edge Kids! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we always have fun here. My Auntie Sophie said this is so educational and inspiring. And the fact that we get to share our culture with you is beyond anything we could have ever imagined. So thank you and remember to share. So Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks, what do you have for us today? We have to unmute you. Okay, thank you. First, I have to ask the little ones to forgive me if shortly after I've told my story, I have to go, okay? I have another engagement. I will stay as long as I can, and then I will just say bye-bye. And then when we talk about Black history in Jamaica, one of the things we can't leave out is the Rastafari community because they are such a presence of Africa and African history. And of course the beautiful music that they have given to us in reggae music and reggae music is a world heritage music. That's very important. 
to be World Heritage, you have to be deemed by the United Nations to have given something to the world which is of value, which they can't do without. And can you imagine that two years ago, we got inscribed, that is the term that they use, reggae music got inscribed as World Heritage Music. Besides the form of the music, the content of the music is important. The music is always full of hope and love and of inspiration and resilience and better things to come. So one of the better known songs of the Rastafari community will be in the story that I'm sharing with you today. It's very easy to learn. Please, I would like you to learn it. And as you learn it, Wherever it appears in the story, I'd like you to sing it. So let me tell you the words first. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love I leave with you. Peace and love. The Rastafari community tend to end all of their ceremonies with that song. And you may hear those words in the songs of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Rita, Marcia Griffiths, all of them. Now, today is the last day of Black History Month 2021. It's not the last day of Black History, but tomorrow is the 1st of March. When I was little Auntie Nadine and the first of a month came around, we would hear our parents say, white rabbit, white rabbit, white rabbit. Because the rabbit, if you call upon the rabbit, on the first day of the month, Auntie Sophie, you have good luck for the rest of the month. So this song is called Rabbit's Song. It has bits and pieces of traditional stories in it. It uses the song Peace and Love, but it also has bits and pieces of all the things that go on in my head. So a long time ago, the rabbit was a symbol of hope. On the first day of every month, people would go around saying, white rabbit, white rabbit, white rabbit. And the lion was very upset. After all, he was King Lion, the king of the jungle. And he thought that everybody should be saying, King Lion, King Lion, King Lion but they were only saying white rabbit. And rabbit wore a smile. That made the lion even more upset. People said rabbit carried a special song in his heart and that's what made him smile. And that made the lion even more upset. So he decided he was going to have a meeting. Let's give it a big name. He was going to have an animal convention to decide what to do about the rabbit. And so he did not invite the rabbit. But rabbit heard about this meeting and he turned up anyway. But he waited outside because Jamaicans have a saying where dogs are not invited, no bones are provided. So Rabbit would not go inside the convention hall. He would wait outside. And as he was waiting outside, all the animals came in their fine feathers, their beautiful furs, their shiny skins. And they nodded at the rabbit. And then they went inside. Because you know, the most important person for the meeting always arrives last. And so here comes King Lion, oh, he wore this beautiful crown and he was dressed in royal purple and he had nothing but scorn for the rabbit and he went inside where all the animals stood because you stand when somebody important arrives and they waited for King Lion to give them permission to sit, but he didn't say sit, he carried in his hand his instrument of authority a gavel, and when he would tap the gavel on the table, all the animals would sit. 
And when he was about to start his meeting, he would tap the gavel on the table again. And just when he was about to begin his meeting, he heard us singing outside. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. I live with you. Peace and love. It was the rabbit. He wasn't upset at all about not having been invited to the meeting. And he was just wishing them peace and love. But the lion was very upset. He said, who dares disturb my meeting just when I'm about to start? And the elephant ran outside to see what was happening. Oh, said the elephant, it is you, little rabbit. You are disturbing the king's meeting and you are stomping your feet and you are shaking your head and you are clapping your hands. Well, I'll take one of these hands if you don't mind and I'll give it back to you maybe when we're done. And he took one of rabbit's hands and put in his back pocket and went inside and said to the king, King Lion, I've solved the problem. Now the meeting will begin. And you know what? As soon as the lion was about to start, he heard that singing again. Peace and love, I live with you. Peace and love. This time, the leopard went to see what was happening. And there was the little rabbit. Oh, he was stomping his feet and he was shaking his head. And he was clapping. You're the leopard. Then, oh, oh, all them say, one hand can't clap. I will take that one and give it back to you, maybe when we're done. And so he went inside and he told King Lion very confidently, I have taken care of the problem. But just when he was about to begin, he heard, Peace and love, I live with you. Peace and love. This time, the big hippopotamus went outside and he didn't ask any questions quickly. He took one of the legs thinking, without a leg, surely the rabbit can't be stomping. And he said this to the king. But just when the king was about to begin, he heard that singing, peace and love. I live. And this time, the bear went outside. And there was the rabbit. Oh, he was hopping on one foot. He was having a jolly good time. And he was shaking his head. And the bear, just as the rabbit jumped on one foot, as he was about to come down, King, the bear caught him and took off that one too. Now he said to King Lion, I promise you, we can proceed without any disturbance, really. Peace and love, I live with you. And out ran the biggest, fiercest dog who had come to that meeting. And without a please or a excuse me, he took off the rabbit's head. King Lion, he said, I guarantee you there will be no further disturbance, really. Peace and love, I live with you. And the king put his crown on and shook his purple robe and went outside to see for himself what was happening. And all the animals followed. And there they saw the body of the rabbit without head, without hands without feet and there was that body and for sure the king heard the singing and when he looked at the body of the rabbit just where the heart is supposed to be he saw something pumping and he went right up to that body of the rabbit without head or hands or feet and he put his ears right where the heart should be and sure enough, he heard the singing. Peace and love, I live with you. 
and he called all the animals, the elephant and the leopard, the hippopotamus, the bear and the dog. And he said, I want you to give the rabbit back his head. I want you to give him back his hands. And I want you to give him back his feet. There is nothing as precious there is nothing more important than a song of hope that you carry in your heart. I want the rabbit to sing and I want you all to dance, dance, dance. And maybe one day you could all be like the rabbit with a special song of hope in your heart and a smile on your face. And so like the rabbit, you will hear white rabbit, white, white rabbit. And the rabbit sang, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love I leave with you, peace and love. Auntie Sophie, can we have everybody singing that song? A one and a two, one and a three, let's go. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love, I live with you. Peace and love. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mina. <laughs> A crier. I know I'm a crier. <laughs> but that was so beautiful. And it's such an amazing message that we need every day in life that no matter what, just show that peace and love. Auntie Nadine, I know you fell in love. <laughs> Anything you have to say about that story? Well, we got just free. I want to have that heart of that rabbit. That's the heart I want to have. We all want to have that heart. It's amazing. You know, no matter what they take away from us, they can't take away love. That's yes, it. absolutely. Auntie Sophie. Auntie Dawn, I always look forward to hearing Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks to just to have her in my presence because she, whenever she leaves, I learn something new. I told her I have made her my mentor, whether she believes it or not. I never know about white rabbit, white rabbit. Now, when I start my program tomorrow on the yes, radio, I am going to start the program by saying, this is March 1, white rabbit, white rabbit, white rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I so, did not know either. Thank you. Every day we learn something new, but as I said, she's a wealth of knowledge and just an icon in our cultural arena. Always, always, we welcome you and thank you so much. What Give a thanks. Give so thanks. She can go in peace. Peace. No, I'm going to stay a little longer, okay. especially if one of the little ones will be up next. So I... Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. And, and like Auntie Sophie, I did not know about the white rabbit. So thank you for sharing that. That's one of the amazing and powerful things about you, Dr. Amina, is that you have a wealth of knowledge that you're leaving around for generations and generations. I hope in 15, 20, 30 years, when the kids look back at these shows and see what you gave to us, it's beyond measure. So thank you from... The world thanks you for that. <laughs> We're going to start with Akela. Hi, Akela. Did you enjoy story time with Dr. Nina? Yes, I did. <laughs> awesome. And I know you have a powerful tribute today. So take us away, Akela. And once again, she's from Bethlehem. And I do know Akela wants to be a doctor, and you're nine years old, right? Yes. All right, go ahead, our future doctor. Margaret Ann Jackson, also known as Maya Angelou. Miss Maya Angelou was born on April 19, April 4th, 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri. Miss Maya Angelou was an American author and poet writer. She published seven autobiographies, three books of essays and several books of poetry. Miss Maya Angelou received dozens of awards 
and over 30 honorary doctoral degrees. She also took part in several plays, movies, television show for more than 50 years. Miss Maya Angelou worked as a fry cook, a dancer, and a performer. She was a cast member of the opera Morgi and Bess coordinator for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and a journalist in Egypt and Ghana. Miss Maya Angelou was active in the civil rights movement and walked with Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X in 1993. Miss Maya Angelou recited her poem on the pulse of the morning at President Bill Clinton's inauguration. She is best known for her childhood and early adult experiences. It tells of her life up to the age of 17 and made her famous. Now we were citing a poem called Phenomenal Woman. Phenomenal Woman. Pretty, pretty woman wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips, I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. I'll be reciting a quote. For Africa, for Africa to me is more than a glamorous fact. It is a historical truth. No man can know where he is going unless he knows exactly where he has been and exactly how he arrived at the president place, at his president place. Thank you, Akila. Wow, phenomenal woman you are, young lady. <laughs> so thank you for uh, showcasing Dr. Maya Angelou, renowned as well. And tell us what she means to you and why you chose her today. I chose her because she inspires me and she, she was a very, very nice woman and she helped a lot of people. Thank you. And we, we thank you for that tribute. You know, I know Bethlehem Junior Academy had superb um, Black History Month just showcasing a lot of phenomenal leaders that have inspired and impacted us all, and especially you youngsters that are learning about the culture and history and, and leading by example. So thank you for choosing her today. You're welcome on to Dr. Mina. Yes, miss. Everybody, I'm so sorry I have to go. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that, Akela. And there are some things I did not know about Maya Angelou, like the number of... Um, honorary degrees that she got. So thank you for that research. Um, Auntie, Auntie Sophie, Auntie Dawn, please allow me to, to give Jaden a special apology. Jaden, I want you to know I will watch you on YouTube. You're a star and I'm going to be watching you. Lovely to have met you, Auntie Nadine. Enjoy the rest of the program today. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Dr. Mina, always a pleasure. One love. Thank you, one love. Peace and love. <laughs> Peace and love. And so thank you. Um, Auntie Nadine, what do you think about Akela and her choice today? It was wonderful. We all are phenomenal women. And I, whenever I listen to that, it always gives me a new perspective. And I just love how she read it. That was amazing. Thank you, Akela. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and we won't keep Jaden waiting. He's patiently waiting. I believe Jason wants to be a cardiologist and he's only five years old. So Jason, what do you have for us? What's your book today? Hey, my name is Jaden. My name is Jaden and I'll be reading Ready Be My Sunshine. <laughs> Sure. 
Will you be my sunshine on a cold and frosty day? Yes, I'll be your sunshine on a cold and frosty day. With warm smiles and great big hugs, I'll chase the crowds away. Will you be my rainbow when it all seems dull and gray? Yes, I'll be a rainbow when it all seems tall and gray. Everything will, part, will brighten up as we, as we laugh and pray. Will you be my boss, my bright star to show the way back home? Yes, I'll be your bright star to show the way back home. I'll be shining sure and true however far you want. Will you be my moonbeam at night when it's so dark? Yes, I'll be a moonbeam at night when it's so dark. My love for you will shine right through like a brightly glowing spark. I'm so glad you are my sunshine, my rainbow up above, my bright star and moonbeam, my sweet and precious love. I love you. The end. The end. <laughs> you have the brightest smile. Oh my gosh. That innocence at five years old. You are an amazing reader and you are a handsome young man with a beautiful smile. And yes, people are putting in the chat that. You, they will be your sunshine, or you could be their sunshine. <laughs> so, Jaden, what do you do for fun? I play games. You play games? What kind of games? Talk to us. Um, I play. I play. <laughs> I play Roblox, Minecraft. And you have a big brother too, right? Yes. Yes, Auntie Dom. Yes, and before the show, I hear mommy say, she tell you some Jamaican words, like she said, shut your eye. Mommy say, shut your eye, go on your bed. <laughs> So a little bit of pepper there, go to bed, close your eyes, go to sleep, so you can wake up fresh in the morning. Shut your eye, boy, and go on to your bed. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for reading for us today, and you are an amazing young man. We can't wait to see what you're doing with your future. I know Auntie Sophie is dying to say a couple words about our readers today. Oh, yes, as always, as always, it's such a treat. And of course, I have to also say before I talk about Jaden, Miss Akela, who is going to be our newest poet. And I see that you love Maya Angelou. Thanks for selecting her because she's also one of my favorite poets. She comes to us with so much strong words and encouragement to women and giving us that drive that we can be special. So thanks for that extra push this morning to say that we're this afternoon, that we're all phenomenal women. Thank you. And Mr. Jaden with your reading. Oh, everybody's gonna wanna take you away. But of course we'll take mommy too because we can't take you alone. <laughs> so we thank mommy for sharing you with us and thank her for giving you the encouragement to continue to read. And we say that to all the parents as well, continue to encourage your children to read. Thank you, Mr. Jaden. okay? And someday you're gonna take care of Auntie Dawn and myself and Auntie Nadine when you are certain. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Auntie Sophie. Auntie Nadine, our first time to the show and we just love your background. Let's start there. Just amazing representing black history, representing the Jamaican culture. We see we occupy it as well. So, so welcome and tell us, you, you, tell us about time. you, Auntie Nadine. Oh. Okay, so today 
I am ready to share something with you. Okay, boys and girls, are you ready for like a story? All right. The name of my story is Donkey Say. What name? Donkey Say. Now, we have to find out what Donkey Say. So you have to listen very carefully and listen out for the proverbs. Yes, this story has some Jamaican proverbs, which are wise sayings or piece of advice. All right? Now, I like to tell who my characters are when I tell a story. So we have Mas Ragajo. He is the farmer on the farm, right? Brother Donkey, Brother Rooster, Brother Patu, who is the owl, right? Brother Goat, and Brother Cow. Yes, and this is how the story go. Mm -hmm. One time, man, way before Wabi Kill Philip, there was a pretty, pretty donkey where he lived on Mas Raga Farm. Him so smooth and shiny, and him yelled them big and bright. But that donkey was the favorite on the farm because he was the only animal that could take the goods to the market. Yes. Every morning when the cock crow. Farmer Raga pile up with a donkey hamper with breadfruit, yam, banana, aki, and the rest of ground provision. It was so important to Mars Raga that brother donkey head start swell. So him piggy might be mm -hmm. him starting to know that him better than all the animal them on the farm and he start get boost upon them. Yes, we hear. Here, brother goat one day. <laughs> Why? You see how life see? The sun dog now have same look. Look how all of them on the farm. And brother donkey get all the corn and the corn shell. And we get pot bottom. That's not right. That's not level. <laughs> brother cow now answer him. And here, brother cow now. Achoo. Them things not partial. It is all right. Make him go on. Remember, say, book it go well every day. But one day, the butter must drop out. Him soon meet him Waterloo. Yes. And every evening when rooster crow, them watch Farmer Raga Joe pack up with a donkey to go on market and left them at the yard. Right. One day, man, before the farmer Raga Joe pack up the ground provision, go and sell a market. With a rooster wake up late. And he run across with a donkey and start crow. <coughs> Here, brother donkey, move out of the way. We wake up already. You're late. That is why me better than you. You don't have not a use. Brother Rooster get vexed and fly up in a brother donkey face. Oh, we are chat to. I feel away. I feel away. But brother donkey just start laugh after brother Rooster and kick up him foot. Poor brother Rooster. He was so sad. He start from ball and run gun while brother Pato yard for telling the story. Brother Pato look pan Brother Rooster. And you know how Brother Pato smart already. Hear him now? Calm as ever. No worry yourself. Every dog have him dear. And every post in four o'clock. Your time soon come. Hear what you do. Tell brother donkey say, there is another donkey that better than him down at the river. And he must go side of the river banking and look in at the water. And when him see the other donkey, if it choke in after him, teach him say, him is the better one. So, brother rooster run, go tell brother donkey say, him here say, there is a donkey Sit on the river banking, we're better than him, and him show off our mercy. 
tail. Red a donkey wheel him tail and say, nobody no better than me. Me a go down the river right now. To make him know say, oh, who run things? He, he, no. Red a donkey never know what a clock a strike. Cause he did for food. So him and Red a rooster chip, chip down the river. That time, I had a moose moose tail and then think a cool breeze. Huh. When he reached the river banking, he look in at the water and see the other donkey. And look pan him. When the donkey get back and chuck in at the water, be sure the other donkey say who run things. And him chunky one when him chunky bread and donkey start clip down the river and him down the river oil and gully rider right up and down the rockstone river and him ball out why why the world no level the world no level kill and gully your song kill and gully that song we bend down at the river God of mercy same time all of the animals them on the farm start follow brother donkey down at the river and the bank in a sea. Langoli rider. Langoli rider. Langoli. Langoli. Langoli rider. Langoli rider. Yes, man. And when you look, we see Pat Mars Raga start run long on the river with one piece of rope to catch bread and donkey. And him start wheel the rope round and round like a lasso and grab on to bread and donkey head. And everybody start pull up bread and donkey. So it did go. And then everybody starts sing. Hold him door, hold him door, hold him door. I know let Thank you, our water. Yes, and you start seeing man. River bank overly. River bank overly. Oh no, Kobali. Oh no, Kobali. Oh yes, Kobali. Oh yes. No, no, did they cobali? No, no, did they cobali? Check him out, cobali. Hey, finally, Father, Farmer Raga Joe and all the animals them drag out where that donkey out of the river and take him, put him down on the bank. Everybody get around to see if he's all right. And then now, poor brother donkey start breathe hard to take out the water all the time. You know. Oh, a true. Me no better than nobody. And the world no level. Langoli de so. Langoli and from that, we have a Jamaican proverb from Brother Danky so till no way go. Danky say, world no level. Kilangoli yaso, kilangoli deso. And what that means? Life can certainly be impartial and full of ups and downs. But when we work together as a team, no matter how different we are, no matter how we look, or even where we come from, our history tells us that we can go up and down the hill and the gully together and find the beauty of this world. And with a rooster look up in the dark wango tree and see with a owl a smile. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Auntie Nate, my first time seeing you and a lot of viewers for the first, oh, oh my God, what a beautiful message. 
And I haven't heard some of those sayings and those songs in forever. So thank you for sharing that because I know a lot of kids will understand and parents who are from the Caribbean will probably understand, but this is such a great opportunity just to rope in the kids and bring back some of these memories and everything. Oh my, the one about like, Bucky Gawel and, and one day the bottom of a dropout. Do you know how Yes, you every day Bucky Gawel. One day the bottom of a dropout. It's actually from the song, I Shot the Sheriff from Bob Marley, but it's also used as a proverb. So that was, you know, I liked using that one. Thank you. What an amazing journey with you today. Thank you, um, Auntie. So <laughs> oh my God. Yes, what a treat. Each Sunday, Auntie Nadine, I say to Auntie Dawn, we are the ones that are most entertained because we go down memory lane, we learn so much, and it's such a treat to sit with the kids. And today, of course, is an example of that. We absolutely love your story, love your energy, love that trail that you took us down and infuse some of our cultural antidotes. And we appreciate that. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I know my mother is enjoying the program. And most of our parents, people of our generation, our parents are always enthralled with our Caribbean Edge Kids program. So thank you. And I love how you do the owl. I have to practice. I, I think I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to try some of that. I, I don't know. I'm so like Auntie Sophie said. You know, we're big kids. We love bringing on guests and and what you share with us so so beautifully. I, I know I'm gonna be practicing Auntie Nadine. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Akela, your first time seeing anything like this before. Yes. <laughs> did you enjoy Auntie Nadine? Yes, I did. <laughs> all the colors, all the animals, just so beautiful. We're delighted and honored to have you, Auntie Nadine. Um, Auntie Sophie, what do you have for me today? All right, my love. Hello again, my little ones. Of course, you know, Auntie Sophie always try to bring you a little story from Brother and Nancy. Now you notice that most of the characters we talk about, we consider them brother this, brother that, showing you the unity, right? So all the characters we consider brother. So here we go. We're going to go. And for those who have never heard before, I'll just give you a quick, quick, quick um, background. And Nancy is a part of the African folklore. He's a popular character in many regions of Africa and is known by many names. He is a trickster character, someone who tries to trick others, but often finds himself trapped in his own web. So here's a story that I'm gonna to share today that talks about how wisdom came to the earth. Now, let's see what happened when brother and Nancy tried to trick people Let's see. One day, Anansi had a clever thought. I know, he mused to himself, if I can get all the wisdom from the village people and put it in a pot, I will be very wise indeed. In fact, I would be the wisest of all. So he set out to find a suitable pot and then he began his journey to collect the villagers' wisdom. He went from door to door asking, oh, wise people of the village, give me some arms of wisdom. Be generous, be generous. The people chuckled at poor Anansi, for they knew that he was always in for some trouble. So of course, each put a bit of wisdom in his pot saying, may God bless you with lots of wisdom, Anansi, and wished him well on his search. Soon Anansi's pot was overflowing with wisdom and he began to move on and he was very happy. He could hold no more. He 
jiggled and he jiggled and he jogged and he jogged and he jigged on his six legs, heart dancing with joy, exclaiming, I am certainly the wisest person in the world. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> but wait, he suddenly stopped as he thought. Hmm, something flashed in his tricky brain. I must hide my wisdom in a good hiding place or else I may lose it. He now needed to find a place to store it. He looked around and spotted a tall, tall tree. He said to himself, if I could hide my wisdom high in that tree, I would never have to worry about someone stealing it from me. So Anansi set out to climb the towering tree. He first took a cloth band and he tied it around his waist. Then he tied the heavy pot to the front of his belly. As he began to climb, however, the pot full of wisdom kept getting in the way. He tried and tried, but could not make progress around it. Just then, Anansi's youngest son, probably as tiny as our little guest here, walked by and saw his father struggling with the pot. What are you doing, father? Asked this little spider. I am climbing this tree with my pot full of wisdom, Anansi replied. But father, said the son, it would be much easier if you tied the pot at your back than in the front. Anansi sat there in stunned silence and then shouted, it's time for you to go home now. The son skipped down the path and disappeared. Anansi moved the pot at the back and climbed the tree with no problems at all. When he had reached the top, he vented out. I walked all over and collected so much wisdom, yet my baby son thinks he is wiser than me. Take back your wisdom. He lifted the pot high over his head and threw it on the ground. The pot crashed on the ground and the wisdom blew far and wide all over the earth. And this is how wisdom came to the world. Now, almost instantly, Anansi repented. Oh, brother, what have I done? I dashed out all of my wisdom and look at what happened and dashed down on his silver lining, you know, the web. He came down on that web, trying to catch the wisdom as much as he could. Since then, and from that day, the spider is always seen on his trail in search of wisdom. All the other spiders also supported him in his search. So even today, you will always see a spider coming down on their silver trail. Undoubtedly, they're searching for wisdom. Jack Mandora, Mina choose none, the end. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Sophie. I did not know that's how we had so much wisdom out there. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> and, now and, we know. And Thank thanks, you. Thanks to Brother Anansi, little son like Jaden, who said, no, that's not the way. So sometimes a child can lead the way. Sometimes the wisdom of children, it says out of the mouth of babes, sometimes wisdom comes. So here we are. But I am glad Brother Anansi showed on the wisdom, else today I would not be this smart. <laughs> <laughs> Me either, so I'm glad he did. <laughs> I'm going to start out with the kids. Viewers, we thank you for sharing this episode and most importantly for tuning in. And if you do have kids that want to come on here and read and sing and dance and have fun with us, you're more than welcome. Please, please, please just email us at thecaribedgekids at gmail.com. That's the, T-H-E, 
Caribe, C-A-R-I-B, edge, E-D-G-E, at gmail.com. And you can find it in our chat any day. But we want to start out with Akila. Tell us anything you want to say to your fans today, anyone that tuned in, any family tuned in today. Thanks for listening and giving me this opportunity to be here. You're so welcome and keep doing an awesome job. We so appreciate you being part of the Caribbean Edge Kids family. And to your school, we thank you as well. Amazing, amazing. And Jaden, our five-year-old. Hi, Jaden. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I love your yellow shirt, by the way. It goes so well with your book. And anything you want to say to the world? Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. And you keep smiling. And like Auntie Sophie said, you guys are going to grow up and take care of all those aunties on the show. <laughs> Auntie Nadine, such a pleasure having you. We thank you. We invite you back. Anything you want to say to the beautiful children out there? Well, I just want to first of all thank you for having me, you and Auntie Sophie. It was a pleasure to be here. I was so honored to have been on this wonderful panel with so many talented people. And also Jaden and Akela, I enjoyed what you shared. That was amazing. Keep on soaring as high as you can because one day you will get there. So I just want to say thank you and um, I, I appreciate it absolutely and we certainly want to extend our thanks to dr mina blackwood meeks who joined us earlier in the program so if you started late you have to go back and watch the beginning because she was of course her amazing self and we're so honored that she could join us today but she had another engagement so she was able to uh, do both. So thank you, Dr. Mina blackwood Nix. We are always honored to have you. And Auntie Sophie, you always delight me every week. And your mom, our number one fan, <laughs> watching. So thank you for that story. I had no idea that's how I got so wise in life. <laughs> but anything for the world? As usual. Oh, yes, all is wise. We know that. Wise, all. But thank you oh, all, as God. usual. It's been a pleasure. And how we wrap up our show, we always say, walk good. And I'm going to add now and make good doppy walk with you. <laughs> yes. And remember to start your month out with. Yes. White, White rabbit. rabbit. White rabbit. <laughs> So watch the beginning of the show because Auntie Dr. Amina blackwood Meeks explains that and we did not know. So we were empowered today as we start the month of March. Have an amazing week. Thanks for tuning into the Caribbean Edge Kids and one love. Walk good. <laughs> and love.